Hello everyone and welcome to the den. Today we're gonna to be canning chicken breast and it's gonna be a raw pack and it's gonna be super easy. Um, anyone can do this, so stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so directions for this today, this canning session comes from the P complete guide to home canning from the USDA. Um, so they don't recommend that you add any liquid to a raw pack. So that, that makes this super, super easy. Um, in the ball canning book, it does say to add liquid, but the raw meat is going to add, it's going to create its own juice while it's canning. So um, we're not gonna add anything and it just can't get easier than that. Just stick some raw chicken in the jars, put them in the canner and let them do their thing. So today I'm going to be doing wide mouth uh, pint sized jars for my chicken. Um, I like to have the smaller sizes, I don't do quarts. Just because if I wanted to do a lunch or something where I didn't need as much chicken, I have them in quart in the pint size and not the quarts. Um, I don't ever want to have to waste. So I'd rather use two of these than one big one and not use it all. Okay, so I already have my jars all washed up. Um, and let me put this over here. I have my jars all washed up. My chicken's already diced and ready to be jarred up too. The only thing I am going to add is the, the half teaspoon of salt or maybe a little less. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can completely omit that. It's for flavor only. Um, it is not required. So feel free to leave that out. So let's get these jars loaded up and get them in the can. This is gonna be super fast today. Okay, so here's my chicken and it's just regular old chicken breasts. I have taken these out of the uh, package, trimmed them some, and got rid of any of the extra fat, the big chunks of fat, also any of the weird skin stuff that's left on there. Um, so that's it. I just, the only thing you do is just chop the chicken. And then get your jars ready here and just fill them up. So what you're looking for here is an inch and a quarter of head space. So, uh, the, the bottom ring here is about an inch, so just a little bit below that. I am going to give it a small pack, like just pack it down a little. Not too much, but a little. I have 12 jars here, hoping that's going to be enough. I don't like to have extra clean jars, just a waste of my time. All right, so I'm gonna fill the rest of these and then I'll come back. Okay, so I ended up having to cut another few breasts to fill up these 12 jars, um, but that's okay. Uh, I wanted to fill all 12 up, so that's what I did. I have my half teaspoon measuring spoon here for the salt, I'm just gonna add that. There's no need to debubble these, there's no liquid added. So after this is done, the next step will just be to take our vinegar paper towel and wipe the rims off to make sure that we get <clears throat> anything off the rims that may cause these to not seal. So salt is in them, raw pack chicken, no liquid added, no debubbling. Let me get my paper towel and my vinegar and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my paper towel with a little bit of just distilled vinegar, just regular old white vinegar. And I'm just going to run these around the rims that, and at the same time, I'm just going to check to make sure I don't feel any cracks or anything that would also cause uh, them to not seal. These are new. Most of these jars are new, so they should be good. Okay, so those are all done, and now we're just gonna put lids and rings on. All right, so here's my rings, or I'm sorry, here's my lids. Uh, just like with the jars, I've just only washed and dried these. Washed them with warm soapy water, same as the lids. No need to sanitize, they're gonna go in the pressure cooker. Um, so let's just get these lids on. I do not have my pressure canner on because this is raw meat. These jars are at room temperature. So I am going to start my canner after I get all my jars in. I 
right, and same with the rings. I just did a quick wash and dry on those, wash with hot soapy water. I don't even really think you would need to wash your rings. They don't come in contact with the food, but just to be safe, I did anyways. And when you're washing them, you can look for any imperfections, but like I said, these were all, but two of these were new jars, so they were also new rings. Okay, so these are all done, and now I'm just gonna finger, make sure these are all finger tight. Okay, and then we're just gonna get these into the canner. All right, so like I said, here's my canner, a 23 quart Presto uh, pressure canner. And heat is not on, so there's no steam or anything. Um, and I'm just gonna get my jars in here. I'm gonna put six on the bottom and six on the second layer. So I'm just gonna stagger these in here, because you can get more than 12 in here. But that's all I'm doing today is 12, and I'd rather have a full canner, but it's okay. Now you don't have to have a rack. You can't, I have a rack. Um, you don't have to have this. Uh, you can just stagger them if you don't have a rack, that's fine. But I'm gonna put my rack in there. And then I'm still gonna stagger them a little bit, so. Just wanna be able to get all that steam around these jars. But sometimes the jars are really packed in there, it's super tight, so, okay. All right, so can the jars are in the canner. Now I'm gonna put my lid on here. Again, oh, my canner's backwards. So I'm gonna have to turn this around. Okay, make sure it's nice and solid on your range here. Arrow to arrow, fill it you'll feel it and then just turn and then now I'm just gonna set my heat to medium and wait for it to come to vent so I just wanted to talk a little bit about how this recipe is really easy um, you know raw pack adding no liquid that's just it's so that's so easy um, but there's other recipes like the last canning video I did. Um, it's actually this, the chicken soup base. Um, you can do anything with this one. Like I said in the last video, you can make chicken and rice, chicken and noodles. You could eat it just like this. But the problem with this recipe is, if you can see here, my, my liquid line is here. And so I had quite a bit of siphoning. Um, let me put this back. I had quite a bit of siphoning with that yesterday. I canned those yesterday. Um, and I canned that all the time. I can this recipe all the time, but every single time I get siphoning. Now I think to myself, you know, what causes siphoning? Well, t temperature fluctuations, whatever it may be. But I am mindful of that. So it's so discouraging when I open up the canner lid after I've spent so much time, you know, invested in these meals, um, just to see that, you know, a lot of it has siphoned and it's so annoying. And I think, well, what am I doing wrong? And I get it that sometimes siphoning is just gonna happen and you didn't do anything wrong. It's just part of canning, but this recipe siphons almost every single time. So for me, I think, the next time that I make that recipe, I'm not gonna do it raw. Um, you fill the head to the head space line with broth on that recipe, and then the chicken's gonna create its own liquid too. So I feel like, what's going on there, you know? So I thought, well, next time I'm gonna try it from the ball. They have like a chicken soup recipe in there where you put everything in a pot, cook it for like 30 minutes or something like that, and then you jar it up. And I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll do that and try to stick to that recipe a little closely uh, rather than this recipe that's raw. Um, I do, I mean, you can raw pack. I mean, you can definitely raw pack chicken. You can raw pack carrots. You know, it's there's no 
in the in the canning book in the USDA canning book you can raw pack those things so it's not that I did that wrong but I don't know I don't know what's going on with that so um, siphoning for me is always an issue I would love to hear if you guys have it have had a presto and maybe now you have an all-american canner or some other kind of canner if you had siphoning before and don't now or is it me i know my range is terrible um and it it does fluctuate the heat so i really have to keep it i can never w really walk away from my canner when it's you know under pressure because it will go really high and i haven't done anything to the temperature um so i have to keep close eye on mine so I would love to know if anybody else has that same problem and did you did you fix it? Because um, I've even raw packed carrots and had them siphon, not nearly as bad, but they definitely siphoned it too and there was sticky carrot juice on the top of a few of my jars. Um, but you know, I guess that's part of canning. So like I said, I'm still waiting for this to vent. Um, we started cold. I thought there's really no direction in the USDA book on how to start this recipe um, in the canner, but because the chicken was cold, jars were room temperature, I just left this at room temperature too and started from no heat and then have it all kind of come up together. So we'll see if these siphon. Um, I think the last, I've canned just raw chicken, oh, I don't know, a bunch of times too, and I don't have as much siphoning issues, but it has siphoned some before. So we'll see this time. So if you have siphoning issues, I would love to know. And tell me if you fixed it. I would love to know how you fixed it. So waiting for this event and we'll be back. Okay, so it's venting now and it's pretty solid, steady amount of steam coming out, steam, air, whatever. Um, so what this stage does is it replaces the air inside the canner with steam. Because the combination of the steam and the heat and the pressure, that's what's going to cook your food to a high enough temperature to kill any botulism that may be in there. That's why we pressure can. Uh, so any low acid food, that's what we're trying to do at this stage. We're trying to get steam filled up in the canner, all in the canner and no air. Okay, so now that we are at a full vent, I am going to set my timer for 10 minutes. And once that 10 minutes is up, then we'll come back. Okay, so our vent timer is right now done. And so what you do at this point, what you're gonna do at this point is you're gonna take your weight for whatever type of cannon you have and you're gonna put it over your vent pipe. And now what we're waiting for, I see the little thing in the back popped up too. Um, so now this is gonna start to build pressure. And where my elevation is, I'm gonna need to be at 13 pounds of pressure before I can start my timer. Now my Presto canner does not rock, doesn't do any ch -ch -ch -ch, none of that. Um, it doesn't do that until it's past 15 pounds of pressure. So right now I'm just gonna keep an eye on my gauge and wait for this to come up to 13 pounds of pressure. And once that is there, then I will start my counter, start my timer. And because I'm doing pints, it's gonna be 75 minutes but I will bring you back once we get up to pressure. Okay, so the canner has reached 13 pounds of pressure. So I started my timer and because they're pints, it's 75 minutes. Um, so right now all I'm gonna do is keep an eye on this, make sure that it doesn't get below 13. I've adjusted my heat just a little bit. I was at medium and now I'm in between medium and low, a little bit closer to medium than low. And I'm, like I said, I'm just gonna watch my pressures, make sure that it continues to stay in that range. I keep mine between 13 and 15. Um, it's really hard to keep it right at 13. So I'd rather it stayed a little bit higher um, than to fall below, because if it falls below, then you have to restart your timer, and I don't ever wanna do that. So um, one thing I did not mention earlier was that this, I started off with eight pounds of chicken in that bowl and I had 12 jars clean. I really wanted to do 12 jars today. Um, so I ended up not having enough. I'd only filled up like seven and a half. So I went ahead and took a few more chicken breasts from um, a tray of chicken I had uh, outside in the fridge and chopped up a few more. So I would say that these 12 pint jars was about 11 
pounds of chicken, I would say, uh, between 10 and 11, probably closer to 11. So now I'm just watching the pressure and I'm just gonna keep it here until the countdown is done. And then when the countdown is done, I'll bring you back again. Okay, so the canner has come all the way down to zero on the pressure. So now I'm gonna take my regulator off. No steam is coming out of this, no, no steam. And this is down, we're at zero. So I know this is still gonna be very, very hot because this dropped down about oh, five or 10 minutes ago. So when I take this lid off, it is going to be hot and there is going to be steam that's still gonna come out of it. So uh, I'm gonna open it this way away from my face and then move it over to the side of my stove here. And you can see how all that steam is still coming out. Now they're still bubbling. I'm trying to see if it looks like they siphoned. I won't know until I get them out all the way, but the jars on the top look clean. And I'm just gonna let these sit in here for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, let them acclimate to the, the temperature a little more and then I'll move them. And that's it, I'll take them out of the canner, I'll set them on the counter and then I'll let them sit there all day and all night. We just had a pop. Um, and then tomorrow morning I will, I will uh, take the rings off, give them a good wash, and mark them with the date and put them on the pantry shelf. The great thing about having this chicken on hand is if you for some reason forgot that to take your chicken out of the freezer or you know, you're in a pinch and you're like, oh, what are we gonna have for dinner? Well, I mean, you could take this, season it really good, throw in some black beans, um, make some rice on the side and have burrito bowls if you have some cheese and sour cream, some lettuce, tomato, whatever you want, avocado. Uh, we do that often, um, it's really good. And the kids love it, everyone likes it a lot. You could also make chicken tacos with this, um, chicken salad sandwich. Um, you can use this chicken for pretty much anything, chicken alfredo, you can use it for anything that you would use chicken on a normal night. Um, with the exception of a few things, like I really like chicken from the grill, uh, can't do that. But, you know, it's very versatile and it's so convenient to have on your shelf so it is definitely worth it to put you know your canned chicken up because you could just do just about anything with it and i love having it so it's well worth the time and effort and this is going to give me at minimum six meals so i just did i just messed with all that raw chicken got it all over with and now six nights i'm set and i don't have to mess with the chicken so I've just cut my time and you know half or more with um, prep work before dinner. So super good to have on hand, very easy to do. Um, it looks like all of these, the liquid is all the way at the top on every single one. I can see the bubbles coming up. Okay, so here's kind of a better view of inside my canner and you can see the bubbling happening there and all that liquid that it created on its own. That's what's awesome about, you know, the raw pack. And like I said, I haven't had too much siphoning with that. You can see that one right there and it's bubbling and, and obviously the bubbles are going to go through the liquid. So that liquid is pretty high. Now we, it might have a little less liquid in it tomorrow. That always happens. But even in the USDA book, it says that raw pack chicken may not have enough liquid to cover the food inside the jar, but all of my raw pack that I've done before has had plenty enough liquid. Okay, so uh, I had to cut because the TV was so loud and my children were so loud. Um, but I have since taking, taken the uh, jars out and they are on the counter and they're cooling. And like I said, uh, tomorrow I will just give those a good wash, remove the, the bands, make sure you do that. Don't store with the bands on. If you do store with the bands on, make sure they're really loose. Um, so if you wanna can anything, you can can chunks. Do chunks, if you wanna do chunks of chicken, chunks of pork, chunks of beef, go for it. Um, you do not have to add liquid. The best thing that you could do is just grab, pick up a, a USDA book, um, you, I think you have to order them online, or just go online and print off the recipes because I think that all the recipes are available online if you do a search for them. Um, that way you can have the USDA guidelines. They're the food scientists that are making sure that these recipes are safe. 
So um, that's a good route to go, and you know that it's going to be a safe can. Um, so anyways, uh, this was, like I said, this is very, very simple, very simple recipe. And it's not even a recipe, really. I mean, it's just procedure, really. Um, very simple procedure, and anybody can do it. So I hope that this encourages you to go out and can something, um, can some chicken, put it on your shelf, so you have an easy weeknight dinner or lunch, whatever it is. And if you haven't already subscribed, if you liked this video, please do so. It helps me out a whole bunch. And I just really do appreciate it. And also maybe give me a like, and I would appreciate that too. So next time I will see you, I may be canning blueberries. And that's a whole different canning process because it's a high acid food. So I will see you in the next video.